First, I want to say thank you so much for doing this interview, but I also owe you an apology because it seems like every time you and I are supposed to be doing a face-to-face interview, something always comes up on my end, and we don't get to do it this way, so I have to apologize. It has been a crazy couple of days with a bunch of red carpets, but I was just like, I don't want to miss the interview, so at least we're doing this over the phone. So I just have to ask Absolutely. Them, yeah, I think I'm totally fine. I understand. No, Phil, so I just wanted to put that out there to apologize, because I think it's been like a year or so ago since we've spoken. Um, yes. And a lot's been going on. What's been happening with you with that year? And we're going to get to the new music, and congratulations, uh, by the way, with that. Thank you. Yeah, the last year has been definitely crazy. Um, I, you know, I started the last year continuing to work on the album, finishing up recording, uh, starting to mix, master, uh, getting into the visuals, making a music video with a dear friend, um, and then of course the album came out in October, and since then it's been promoting and playing shows. So yeah, it's been a definitely a really busy but also really wonderful year, for sure. But this is a very special. Your music is great and fantastic, but this is something that you really target, and it has to do with a certain day, and it really has to do with what's been going on really in the uh, public eye in the last two two and a half years. Do you want to talk about that, please? Yeah, um, yeah, just a little bit of background, yeah, on, on the project. Um, yeah, the album, uh, all of the songs center around femininity and womanhood, and. Um, the female kind of experience, and uh, so I, I made the album with an entire team of women. Uh, every every role, from studio musicians to engineers to mixing to mastering to album artwork to music video direction and crew, um, every role was was filled by a woman. And um, yeah, so that's that's quite special to me, and, and something that you certainly don't see too much in such a male dominated industry, you know. <laughs> Do you think a lot has been changing? I mean, I was just dealing with the Canadian Screen Awards, and I do believe they said 60% of the nominees were women directors. Um, you notice now that when you see sort of like the Juno Awards, you see more women walking up on stage with, with the gold, whether it be a performer or a videographer. Um, do you Are you starting to see the changes happening now? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, women and female musicians uh, are definitely starting to understand that we have the power and the control to take our own music into our own hands. We don't need men to make music. Uh, We can choose to work with men if we so choose, you know, and that can be wonderful and amazing, but it's not a necessity perhaps anymore um, as it was once thought of. Although I will say like, Still, only 3% of people working in music studios are women. So that statistic is pretty upsetting and uh, pretty, yeah, like pretty hard to swallow. So, you know, I think behind the scenes, uh, things are still pretty bleak in terms of just like straight statistics and numbers. Like there just are not enough women, um, you know, being embraced in the studios and, you know, in any realm outside of just performance. So that's something that I think about a lot and think still has a lot of room to improve, you know. Do you remember where you were when you decided you wanted to do this? Um, And do you remember exactly why? Was there an incident or anything that made you go, you know what, I need to do this? Yes, I was, I I live in Los Angeles now and I had just moved to LA uh, the fall of 2016. I had my cute little studio apartment in Hollywood. I was sitting at my desk. I was starting the process of writing this album and Donald Trump had just been elected president of the United States and myself and many of the people around me, especially women and people of color were extremely upset, uh, extremely just a lot of turmoil and, and panic. And I was sitting at my little desk uh, writing my my songs and just kind of trying to figure out, like, what to make of all of this. And I just felt like I wanted to surround myself with women um, as much as I possibly could just to feel better and safer and more understood. And that was kind of how it all kind of began, I think. Well, you know what? At least something good came out of him becoming president. <laughs> you and this album. So at least something. Um, what's the lead track from this? 
Um, the first single was Two. Uh, we made a nice music video. Me and my dear friend Anastasia Lebedeva made a music video for the for the song that we're very proud of, and um, that was our first single. And the second single is Lush Life, which we just released as a single a couple weeks ago. What is that one about, please? Uh, Lush Life is actually the only cover on the album. I wrote every other song, but Lush mm-hmm. Life is a Billy Strayhorn um, jazz standard. Uh, that we put on the album. I love jazz very much. I studied jazz in college, and um, Billy Strayhorn is one of my favorite composers, so we threw that on there just kind of for fun, and it ended up turning out quite well, and uh, we released a little behind-the-scenes video, and uh, and yeah, so it was a joy to put that on there. I was Now, I do believe that, did you have a show last night? I did, yes. Still recovering. How, how did it go? Because you are here in Toronto as we speak. Yeah, I'm in Toronto. Yeah, here to, we played that, that show. Um, so yeah, we played Calgary a couple of nights ago and then through to Toronto. And the show was wonderful. Yeah, we played at this beautiful kind of big like warehouse gallery type of space, but it has a full sound system and and it was beautiful, like lots, just such a beautiful audience. Everybody was so lovely and, and listening so intently and, and so just like receptive to the music, which was great. And yeah, I played duo with my bass player, Brittany Carlson, and we just had a really, really, really fun time. It was a very nice, very, very positive show. So that was a joy to, to do. Always great. <laughs> what advice can you give young ladies who are getting into this business right now? Because I know when I got into this business, yes, it was definitely male uh, dominated, but it's not just those changes going on with women and finally getting their enforcement in this industry. It's the industry itself. I mean, just the technology and the things that you use are changing constantly. So yes. what advice can you give young ladies getting into this business, whether they're going to be behind the board, in front of the microphone, or even promoting music? What advice mm. do you give them? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that um, when you're a young woman starting in music, you have to prove yourself double, you know, because you are surrounded by majority men. You feel like you really, really, really have to prove yourself like crazy at all times to get even just half as much respect as, as the men starting out with you. And in the process of that, you can sometimes lose sight of what you actually like about music. You can kind of start going down these paths of like doing things just to try to impress people rather than doing them because you actually like them. And I was certainly guilty of that. I was constantly trying to write music and play music in a way that I thought would impress people. And I didn't even really like what I was making anymore. So I think just really trying to listen to what it is that you actually love doing and what you're actually great at and just stop trying to impress, you know, upon people that you're capable and talented because, you know, that will come through as long as you're actually being authentic and making the work that you truly love and that you're truly great at. Um, And also just remember that, like I said, you don't need men to make music. Reach out to other women, you know, who are maybe less visible Um, collaborate with them, hire them for your work, um, work together and bring each other up, you know, and, uh, and make each other's work better. And, and, and that's a really beautiful thing. I love, I love seeing women working with other women and I love seeking out other women to work with on my projects. It makes me really happy and excited. Any chance for a summer tour, uh, and coming back to Toronto, the Ontario area, anywhere around here in Canada? I would definitely love to. No plans for the summer. I'm going to be in L.A. working on um, some shows over there, but I really hope to get back on the road in the fall and early next year as well, and I will definitely be back to Toronto when that happens for sure. In the meantime, social media, where do we go to find you? Anywhere around the world. Yeah, you can find me at Lindsay K. Music, K-A-Y, Music, uh, on Instagram, I don't particularly enjoy Twitter, but I have one. I don't really use it very much. And uh, Facebook and lindsaykmusic.com for tour dates and, and info for my music and everything like that. Believe me, I know exactly what you mean. Well, gosh, <laughs> I didn't have to do the social media stuff. Anyways, great talking to you. 
so sorry we couldn't have hooked up in in person, but I promise you, I don't care if the world is coming to an end before it does, we are going to meet up one-on-one and we're going to make sure we get to do a sit-down interview. That sounds fantastic. Thanks, Rudy. Have a good one. (laughs) You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. 